On this episode of Resi Week, the impact of technology on lifestyle design at CD 2018, Randy Blanchard joins Vanco and announces Spot for Dot. Fabaro announces local training opportunities. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 134. Easier, not harder. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Harman International and by SDVOE, the platform for network AV. Welcome to Resi Week. This is your weekly wrap up of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for AVNation.tv. And today I'm pleased to be joined by the one and only, thankfully, Stephen Bronner. He is the president of Pro Audio Georgia and one of my longtime friends. How you doing, bud? I'm just over here being used and abused by Mr. Scott. It's a beautiful day in Georgia. I love being here, man. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Then we have Andre Lalonde. He is a senior industry expert who finally got a job, uh, but we're we're in the the tryout phase or, or the, the the gentle phase. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, buddy. Good to see everybody and. Uh... Hot, hazy, and humid here in the Northeast today. So, lots it's of hot fun. and hazy everywhere, man. It's yeah. ninety degree or ninety percent humidity here in Ontario, which is insane. And last but not least, uh, we welcome Frank Santos. He is the director of training for Vanco. And again, Frank, I'm sorry you had to start your your experience with us with these two gentlemen. Um, I'm great, but you know, <laughs> how not you doing? No problem at all. Glad to be here. Happy to be here. This is uh, quite awesome, and it's uh, same here, hot and hazy in Chicago, Illinois. It's crazy. Hey, hey, hey! Crazy it might times. be least. It might be least. This is his first show, so yeah. You know, he, <laughs> we'll see. He might be last at least. We have to. We have to see. He is a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, enough, and do our enough. best. We'll do our best. And, we feel the pressure already, but it's okay. Right? There's no hazing involved, is there? No, not at all. That was it. That was the hazing, the opening, the opening monologue. There, there is no hazing involved at all. <laughs> Terrible. All right, gentlemen, let's kick this off. This comes to us from Residential Systems. The Women in Consumer Technology is scheduled to present a Tech Talk panel uh, at Cedia on Thursday titled The Impact of Technology on Lifestyle Design. They are going to uh, host this panel by uh, Tony Sabatino who is the Manhattan's National Kitchen and Bath Association Charter President. The panelists will include Melissa Andresco from Lutron, Don DeLuca, uh, founder and principal of Don DeLuca on Design, and our good friend Heather Sidorowicz, who is the president and owner of Southtown Audio Video. They're going to go over uh, essentially how to integrate technology into lifestyle and how the the technology that our channel offers can help enhance our our clients' lifestyles. Steven, I'm going to come straight to you on this one as the integrator and and say, how do dealers create that lifestyle environment in a way in which they can explain it to their end users, to their to their consumers? You got to keep it simple. Uh, the consumer will come to you with a list of ideas, stuff they've read online, stuff they've heard from friends. Uh, I've got a project right now that I'm working on where the guy comes to me and says, my brother-in-law is a maven at audio video stuff and he's designed this system for me. And there are things written into the system description like 7.2 Atmos. Um, you know, and you have to, you, you look at these things and you, you just have to take what the client has, take their input and realize that um, you don't want to sell them boxes. You know, we, Clients don't want to buy a bunch of boxes. They want to buy an experience. So if you go to your client and you say, hey, I'm going to sell you 14 IP video injectors and 12 IP video receivers and, and three switches, the client's going to look at you like, get out of here. I don't, I don't want all that stuff. But you could actually sell them a twice as big system for more money and come in and sell them an experience. You can say, you know, hey, this is, going to allow you to have less cable boxes. We're going to centrally locate all your equipment so you don't have cable guys walking all over your house to test out equipment. And uh, I have, sorry, <laughs> you don't have cable, guy, cable guys walking all over your house. We have a chat window, folks, and sometimes it gets very funny. 
So, um, no, my thing is, is we're selling an experience and that's what we do. We, we, we try to take what the client wants, tamper, expect, or temper expectations where we need to uh, actually tamp them down where we need to. And, um, you know, give them the things that they're looking for, make life simple. The, what we don't want to do is bring a ton of technology into the house and make their life more difficult. And so uh, we have a guarantee uh, with my company that if it takes more than five minutes for you to learn how to use your interface, then we rewrite it. Uh, because honestly, you have never downloaded an app in your life that it took you more than five minutes to learn that you used more than once. Uh, that's just the way it goes. People don't want to have to tinker with it. People don't have to mess with it. They want to open it up and go, okay, I want to do this, this, and this. So that's what we do. We focus very heavily on lifestyle. That's, that's all we focus on. As far as selling boxes, our clients, we don't do line item pricing. We don't do individual model numbers. We literally come in and go, we're going to use this equipment. We're going to make this happen in your life. And it's going to be this easy. And, and that's the way to do it. You know, I have a tendency because we do these shows and we're the guys that read all the publications and know all the specs. I have a tendency to want to nerd out on people. And uh, I learned many years ago that most people don't want to be nerded out on. Most people just want to be told it's cool. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be easy. So that's what we do. Very good. Andre, your, your background, you've, you've been in that situation where you've reached out to specifiers and, and dealt with that from a manufacturer and, and train dealers and, and help dealers learn how to reach out to specifiers. How much of demonstrating that we can create this lifestyle is something that not only has to be done at the home over level, uh, homeowner level, but also needs to be done at the, the, the specifier channel and how do dealers go about doing that? Well, I think you've definitely mentioned something. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it does need to get delivered to the homeowner and in a way that they can understand. I completely agree with what Stephen's saying. At the same time, though, we have to teach the dealers on how to be able to make that approach. Uh, typically, that is where you know, there's a little bit of stumbles or something else in the industry itself, although there's been some huge changes this year already at the show. There's going to be so much more of an emphasis on design and with Jill's coming in. I think there's some really good things that CD is planting the seeds for, but this is one of those, got to tell them once, got to tell them twice, got to tell them three times. Um, you know, on, on how to approach, how to get these specifiers involved. This is why companies such as my former, you know, some of my former companies, you know, with Lutron and that focused on the specifier and specifier marketing and making sure they understand so they come educated as well, right? So I think this is really kind of a relationship that's being built between the specifier community, between the dealer community, the industry, the manufacturers, and basically say, see, look, we can work together. We can be able to express this and really truly deliver what the consumer is looking for, the homeowner is looking for without using all the techno mumble jumble that Stephen was discussing. Absolutely. Very good. Frank, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about when it, when it came to this story was this is something where, you know, we always hear, we have to have that conversation, but at what point does the conversation not uh, either a start uh, or B need to be augmented and supported by, you know, training or, or marketing materials and, something beyond just, oh, this is what we can help you do. Well, it's all about value props, right? What do these products have, have to offer, right? As Stephen said, you got to make these products easier, not harder on their lifestyle, right? So it's all about value props, uh, finding out what those value props are for these people and saying, here's the product, here's how to help you out. But furthermore, here's how it'll enhance your lifestyle, right? So what we try to do at Vanco is we try to define our products and find out where it fits in each individual market uh, and then find out how, again, it makes it a lot easier on people. Very good. All right, gentlemen, let's go to our next story of the day. This comes to us, and, and this is going to be a, a bit of a two for one. Uh, this comes to us from strategy.com, Randy Blanchard, an ex-ADI uh, uh product manager, or I, I don't remember his exact title and I'm missing it as I'm searching for it at the moment. Uh, but he, he spent 13 years plus at ADI. He is taking an audio role at Vanco and is their new director of audio products. Uh, a couple of the big things that he is planning to work on is of course, expanding their uh, audio product line as well as uh, building their relationships with their, with their managers and, and with all of their suppliers, et cetera. 
And the, the secondary part of that story is that uh, just released this morning is they're putting an echo dot in your wall. And again, this, this kind of ties in together between the two. Uh, and that comes to us from our own site, aviation.com. So you can check that out. Andre, I'm going to start with you on this one and then we'll come to Frank, uh, who I know will have a lot to say about it, which is why we're not starting with him because he'll take all the time. Andre, when we look at this, this is one of those things, Vanco, you know, we, we kind of know in the industry where they started, they've acquired a couple of companies, they continue to expand and build some very cool products. What does it mean for Vanco to bring in somebody with the pedigree of Randy to run that audio division? I think, well, first of all, congratulations to Randy walking into a very uh, well-run organization. I think I, I wish him the best and honestly, he's a great buddy of mine. I think what you're getting is the boots on the ground experience straight hand, right? It's not just somebody who's always been in the manufacturer side of things that assumes and that guesses what people want. He's been living the hand-to-hand -hand combat, as you mentioned, Matt, for over 13 years. He absolutely knows what to do. He knows how to deliver that message because he's been extremely successful doing it. And he has an absolute passion for audio and audio products. So, I mean, well done, well done, Vanco, on, on securing an amazing individual. I think it's just going to make you guys skyrocket to me. Very good. Frank, when we look at not only the impact that, uh, that Randy will obviously have, but when we look at products like Spot for Dot, um, this is such an evolving part of the industry. What does it mean to A, have Randy on to help push this, uh, but B, to be producing these types of products that give us so many more options uh, and, and technical capabilities that we really haven't had in the past? Hey, absolutely. So, so Randy is coming on board as our direct, director of audio products. So he's going to head up uh, Beale Street Audio and Pulse Audio, two of our audio lines. Now, admittedly, we are, in terms of AV, we are more video guys. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I've been with Vancouver for six years, and I'm primarily a video guy. So our audio, we really need to help on, especially acquiring a company called Beale Street Audio with their, with their line of speakers. So that was very important to us. Uh, our sales staff, the same way. We're more video guys. So Randy, uh, along with his expertise, his knowledge, and his experience in the audio industry, we're really pumped up internally to have him on board. Uh, so he's going to help us with the direction of those two uh, brands, if you will, as well as bringing new products like the Spot for Dot. And the Spot for Dot is obviously a great product where you can flush mount an Amazon Echo Dot into the wall. It's amplified. It's a 2 by 25 watt amplifier uh, right into uh, a pair of speakers. So uh, he's going to help us um, figure out what we can do with these new products and uh, bring out even more new products as well. Very good. Stephen, when you look at a product like this, and, and I realize that this was just announced, just came off embargo this morning, but this is something that the, the industry's toyed with uh, the last little bit. And, you know, congratulations to Vanco for bringing this out with the expediency that they did. Looking at using uh, the Amazon Dot and, and some of those products to, you know, really provide a true multi-room audio experience, what does this mean for integrators having, you know, something like this that, albeit can, can kind of start at that entry level price point and grow all the way up throughout the house? Well, um, you know my rule on products, and that is uh, it has to integrate. It has to play. And uh, this does not, this is a standalone product. Uh, I think personally that this is a great product for guys doing maybe a condo, or something like that. I think it's a freaking cool idea. Um, you know, the the positive side to it is it's kind of an all-in-one package where you get your your dock, your amplifier. All you have to do is add a set of speakers, drop some wire in. It's pretty easy to retrofit um, as long as you can get to electrical, and in most places you can. So it's a <clears throat> I could see you retrofitting this into any environment with very minimal cuts. Uh, it doesn't require a home run. Um, it's a great product for a single room solution. You've got a kid's bedroom that they want, they want music. Uh, I think that's great. Um, I'd like to see something like this. And, and there is a competitor on the market that has a dot based product. Um, but the, I'd like to see a product like this that um, maybe had, you know, had a thing where you could send the audio back to a head end for music. Uh, that would be pretty cool. 
uh, you know, something like that would be would be kind of where I would want to go with it. But on the flip side, um, you know, that's the really neat thing about our industry is is every one of our clients is different. Every company is different. Everybody working is working at a different angle. And if you're trying to be like somebody else, that's probably why your business isn't growing. Be yourself. And this product is great for that. Vanco has come out with a product that's a super awesome solution. I could really see this product taking off in MDUs. Um, that's, that's what I see. Honestly, that's, and <clears throat> depending on the application, I could see it being used in preschools and things like that, where you could walk over and mute the microphone. So it wasn't always active, but when it got to be sing along time or play time or something, instead of the teacher having to break out a boom box or hook her phone up to a speaker, she could literally walk over and unmute the dot and go to town. You know, that's, I, I can see a really awesome use for the product. I think it's great forward thinking. Uh, but as an integrator, um, it's not a product that, uh, when I look at a product, the first thing I think is, who could I sell this to right now? Uh, Andre, you'll appreciate this. Whenever um, the Lutron Shades rolled out the first year, and Blake tells this story all the time. We looked at the Lutron battery powered shades on the floor. I said, I have a client for that. I stepped back and I sold eight eight shades right there from the CDF floor during our walkthrough. I took a break from the walkthrough and sold them. That's how I look at products. We mm -hmm. And, and I know guys that I've mentored that will, that can sell this product. But for me, I just wish it, I would like something like this where then I could turn around and feed the audio back to the head end. <clears throat> and before any of my fellow integrators get on me, I realize I could run a cat five, put an audio output converter on it and do that. Don't judge me. What I'm talking about is way too like, late for that. Oh yeah. Way too, late. <laughs> way too late for that. What I'm talking about is something right out of the gate that may have like a balance built into it that you could just say, Hey, here you can either use our amplifier or you can use this audio output jack to run back to your head in. Um, but no, I think <clears throat> Vanco does a lot of great things and uh, they, they, they fulfill an important spot in our industry. And um, you know, I, I'm not one of those guys where everything has to be super expensive to be right. Uh, sometimes the right solution is, you know, a regular everyday solution. Uh, I don't need an $800 audio balance. Sometimes I just need a $60 audio balance. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I, I, I stand on this product, but I'm excited that they've got an audio guy running their audio line. Um, like he said, he's got a house full of video people. Uh, and that is, I'm a, I'm an AV nerd. So I like both audio and video with HAA and ISF certifications. So what I say is have your audio people do your audio stuff, your video people do your video stuff. And at the end of the day, everybody drink a beer together. <laughs> so, Sounds like you know, a plan. I like so that. Matt, Matt yes, the, thing, in, the interesting thing I find about this is again, how we're now taking an echo dot, right? A piece that was, that is very consumer grade. That is mm -hmm. something that you just go, you buy off Amazon or on a prime day or whatever else, 30 bucks, 50, if you overpaid. And now it's becoming an element of the wall, right? It's now becoming part of that wall which is, by the way, sacred, go back to our previous conversation, very sacred to depending on which dealers or which, which interior designers or design, mm -hmm. you know, that you're talking to. And at the same time, whereas historically, we would only assume that it would be for a light switch or a plug or maybe some type of touch environment for a control system, right? That whole virtual button press that it is now enabling, tying into the rest of the system, that is a whole new world that, you know, two years ago I was on some, you know, a board with Brad Hines from Control 4 and we were saying, yeah, well, we see it's going to replace but not really replace things. Now it's kind of like, okay, I'm eating part of my words to a point because it's like it's becoming way more ubiquitous than I think anybody ever imagined. This well, and not, not to mention, future. you can walk into any existing home that had, you know, any track home that had like a resound uh, uh, A-bus type system or anything like that where you're limited and, and you've got to rip the walls open to do something and drop this thing in. And it, it, it plays very well. It'll be very interested to see where this goes. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to our next story of the day. This comes to us from our own website. Uh, Fabaro is offering localized training where you can become Fabaro certified. Uh, essentially they are offering throughout a bunch of distributors and directly through uh, themselves. They're offering a, a one day training class where you can become a Fabaro certified uh, integrator. Uh, and, and again, offering this at multiple locations across uh, 
North America, essentially. Frank, I wanted to start with you on this one, uh, being a trainer the way in which you are. How important is it that manufacturers offer training in multiple ways, not just online, not just webinars, but locally or, or as local as possible and at, at events like CD Expo, which is coming up in a week? It is absolutely important. Um, you know, oftentimes when I do training, so you know, my job here at Vanco is obviously travel and see our distributors and their dealers in person and train them. I can also do webinars, but you're right. We, we've got to come up with more ways of doing uh, more training. Um, so we actually employ our representation groups and, and I'll train them as well to try to get them to train, obviously, our distributors and dealers. Um, you know, with, with training, with this technology that's moving so fast, uh, it seems like week by week we're getting a new acronym, right? Like EARC or something like that or HDR or something like that. So every time that we come out, we're, all, we're always coming across a new technology. Um, so absolutely training is of the utmost importance. So I'm trying to get there on the road. Uh, I've actually got somebody underneath me who's starting to travel and get on the road and start to train. But yes, uh, training is very important to get there, to get out there. Absolutely. Very good. Steven, as an integrator, do you, re I don't want to say require, but do you prefer when you can drive, you know, 10 minutes, an hour, two hours or so and get to a localized training center versus only being able to do something online or only being able to do a, a once or, or two year type event like CD Expo where you can sit down with that manufacturer or industry training. How important is it to you to have access to that localized training? Important enough for me to complain about it constantly. Um, <laughs> like literally every single time I talk to a manufacturer, um, so I'll give you a good example, um, Cedia, and I'm going to go right at them. Cedia has their localized training things. They try to have them everywhere. Guess where they don't have one? Atlanta. So I want to, it's a small city. Yeah. Hartsfield's world's busiest airport. Every single manufacturer has a hub here. Everything comes through Hartsfield. Um, the industry is ignoring the Southeast because, I don't know. They're stupid. So the, the reason why I bring that up is <laughs> we have um, in, in less than six months. And, and this was, um, this goes off of an article I read a year ago that said in a year and it may have already surpassed. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there are more, there will be more movies produced in Georgia than there are in Hollywood. So uh, and that's mostly right here in the Atlanta area. So I know it's a whole state compared to a city, but think about that. Um, local training is critical. If you don't have, and I do the same thing with products I carry. If, if a company is not present at Cedia, I do not sell their products. If I cannot get training on a product, I do not sell it because I ask the weird questions. I ask the questions that tech support can't answer because I have an extensive electrical background, electronics education. When I ask a question about how something works, it may be a board level question. It may not be a, what plug goes here? I know what plug goes where. I want to know what happens if I turn this setting up or turn that setting up. And I can only get those questions answered in local training. Uh, in defense, in, in, in the oppose that, um, now, Lutron does a great job with having some local road shows. They had one in Atlanta a couple of years ago that was one of the greatest trains I've ever been to, uh, which was done by Holly, I think, uh, that was how to sell our product against other products. That was an amazing training. And I went to it. I was there the whole day. It was freaking awesome. So, uh, yeah, local trainings are critical to integrators. That's important. We don't all have money to drop to travel to wherever. Uh, in October and November, I'm going to just add power to get my level one and level two training. That's down in Florida. I can drive there. Uh, but, you know, if all you're offering is trainings in New York and California and Texas and Oregon and Washington, guess what? You're missing the boat, folks. There's a lot of money in the southeast. The weather doesn't suck and the people don't either. So we need, we need more local trainings and it's critical to expanding your brand. Andre, when, when you hear what uh, Steven's talking about and, and you hear what Frank's talking about, about trying to get on the road even more, mm -hmm. but we also realize how large North America is, not to mention 
the global community as well. I've got two questions for you. How can, or, or how much can we ask of integrators in, in frequency of training, i.e. everybody carries a, a suite of products. They can't go train with somebody every other week. Um, or, or maybe they can, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. The other question I have is how hard is it for a, a national brand even to get out to every area? Because there's a, again, just in North America alone, there's a lot of places where you can't get somewhere within two hours. Right. How, how, where do you, where do you draw the line? Well, I think that's an interesting question. When it comes to the number of times people should be training, I would argue if you're not learning something new every day, then you really have to wonder exactly what type of business are you in. The thing that makes this industry so great and so fantastic is that there's always new stuff coming in. You don't necessarily need to understand the nuts and bolts like Steven does, but you do have to get to a certain point, at least be able to speak intelligently about something. Yeah, I've heard about it. I'll get back to it. Right. What we were coaching, you know, with all the companies I've worked for, we've always coached saying, look, if you can get in but once a quarter, right? Because everybody's got business ebbs and flows, right? So if you can get in and was high, and we used to specifically plan our trainings around those ebbs and flows. So we knew mm -hmm. we were going to get more people in the last couple of weeks of August prior to CDA so they know what's coming out type of thing, that I can get butts in the seats at the end of July when everybody's on vacation. Likewise, nobody's going to go to training around Christmas time because you guys are all busy answering last minute calls, right? Because the homeowners want their stuff to be working for mm -hmm. Christmas day. Exactly. Right. And some things like the lights not working kind of important, maybe depends on, depends on your religion, but the lights got to definitely be working. <laughs> so argument is at least once a quarter should be doing some type of learning that doesn't necessarily involve in-person training. You could start with in person and then do some online and maybe do some, some, some learning on your own or attend a webinar or something like that, right? One of the previous companies I worked for with URC, we would have a weekly webinar every Friday, right? Yes, we would do some in-person and everything else, but the idea is there's a touch base. But we published the calendar. So if you don't want to attend the training, you don't have to. If that's of interest, then put it on your calendar, get the appointment, get the EVI type of thing, and then you're set to rock and roll, right? So that's extremely important. When it comes to doing national deployments, you're right. The challenge there, and Frank's already mentioned it, it's lack of resources, Right, it's getting the ROI in that deployment. So you'll typically will see a national, like a, not necessarily regional, but a national deployment roughly once or twice a year, depending on product launches, depending on things are going, for there to be some level of ROI. We can't just be looking at these as cost centers. They have to look at them as profit centers. That is the ability of creating revenue, getting the dealers involved. Now, I'm not necessarily against, though, the, listen, we're going to pay for your ticket, Stephen. We're going to pay for you to come to New York for three days right? And you can come and learn this stuff, but that's got to be better time with Steven's ebbs and flow of his own business, which are different because he's in the Southeast. Let's not even start there than they are in the Northeast and Canada and everything else. Very good. Yeah, right. to, uh, to Andre's yeah. point really quick. Yeah. I mean, training is a two way street. I mean, I, I've got to be one to come out there and obviously there are way more integrators than trainers, right? But the, the trainee has to be willing to take their time and come out as well. Uh, honestly, when, when I do trainings, I learn just as much from them and as hopefully they do me. Uh, I picked up a lot of tips from integrators as well. So uh, again, uh, Andre, you are certainly correct with that. And something just to just add on that, Matt, another element too is not everything has to be a formalized training as well. Counter days at a particular distributor or at a rep yep. agency or an experience center, those are all touch points. Those are great ways of saying, you know, a guy, you know, Stephen can come in and ask those little itty bitty questions. The person there is the expert, they're the knowledge and they more than love to have that interaction with those types of trust me, there's nothing more boring than sitting at a Disney for four hours and have no question. They want that interaction. <laughs> Go ahead and ask them yeah. the really hard questions. Very like, what good. is the One meaning thing I of life? Me talking the entire time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. All right, gentlemen, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Frank, uh, hope you enjoyed your, your first time here. Hopefully we were, we were nice. I can't speak for Steven, but Andre and I were, were definitely nice being, you know, I Canadian. Did. Thank you very much. Which it was are. a pleasure. If people want to connect with you, learn more about Vanco and the, the, the entire umbrella of brands that you guys have there, where can they do that? Absolutely. So they can visit our website at www.vanco1.com. Otherwise, my email address is franks at vanco1.com. And finally, on Twitter, at vanco1av. 
Very good. Thanks again for being here. Andre, my good friend, thanks for joining us. If people want to connect with you, where can they do that? Easiest way is on LinkedIn. Just look for Andre Lalonde and there's not too many giants like myself. So go ahead and find me and go ahead and take me away. Will do. Steven, my good buddy, uh, thanks again for joining us and dropping some insight. Uh, where can people connect with you? Uh, you can get me at ProAudio underscore GA on Twitter. Uh, look at that hashtag, Country Boy Smiling. Um, you, can, uh, you can see me at Cedia this year. I'll be all over the place. Uh, you can vote for me too. How about that? Ooh, uh, fancy. And uh, um, you got I'm my vote. Fine. ProAudioGeorgia.com, ProAudioGA. Just look for me. I, I'm pretty easy. Reach out to me if you have any questions, anybody, integrators, uh, manufacturers. I look forward to hearing from everyone. Excellent. All right. Thanks again for joining us. For myself, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me at Matt D. Scott on Twitter and every other social platform. But more importantly, please stop by avianation.tv where you'll find this show as well as a wide variety of our other shows with all the verticals that we cover. When you visit the website, please take a moment to check out our underwriters. We are extremely thankful for their support and ask that you support them as well. Thanks again for watching. That's all the time we have for this episode of Resi Week. Resi Week.